result of a national inquiry in Canada has sent shockwaves across the country and beyond. The inquiry, conducted by the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, says that the Canadian government was complicit in the deaths and disappearances of thousands of Indigenous women and girls in Canada over the past decades. It is no coincidence that this is happening at this time. Essentially, for the last several years, there's been a significant campaign to bring the plight of missing and murdered Indigenous women to the Canadian government. For a very long time, this has remained something outside of the, pub, pub, the public consciousness, something that most people do not pay attention to. The inquiry, launched by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, has resulted in a 1,200-page report. It says the prevalent violence against Aboriginals is due to long-standing discrimination against the people and the government's failure to protect them. According to the report, the violence that these victims have faced over the years occurred through, quote, state actions and inactions rooted in colonialism and colonial ideologies. The Canadian government has placed very little emphasis on domestic human rights for some time now, but they have always placed them on other countries, mainly due to fulfill foreign policy. The report was headed by four commissioners and investigated close to 1,500 people. These included family members, experts and officials. The inquiry further accuses the justice system of treating cases of native deaths with discrimination. The federal government's First Nations policing program must be replaced with a new legislative and funding framework consistent with international and domestic policing best practices and standards. The report has also made sweeping recommendations to prevent such violence and discrimination in the future. To the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls of Canada, to their families and to survivors, we have failed you. We will fail you no longer. In the days ahead, let us walk forward together as partners, hand in hand, as we right these wrongs and seek justice for the Indigenous people of Canada. Canada has been at the forefront of blasting any nation that commits human rights violations. Yet, it is a dark record when it comes to Aboriginals, and in this case, Indigenous women. The crimes that are committed at home, the abuses that are committed here in Canada, have not had the importance that many of those around the world, and some outright fabricated, have had to the country because of the elites, who have a vested interest in trying to demonize certain countries. While Aboriginal people account for only about 4% of Canada's population, they, on average, suffer from higher rates of crime, poverty, and addiction. A shocking one in four indigenous peoples, or 25 percent, are living in poverty, and four in ten, or 40 percent of Canada's indigenous children, live also in poverty. Time and again, we have heard of their disappearance, violence, or even death being labeled low priority or ignored. We have heard of their human rights being consistently and systematically violated. It is shameful, it is absolutely unacceptable, and it must end. In 2017, the incarceration rate for the Aboriginals in Canada was 2,440 prisoners per 100,000 adult Aboriginal population, compared to 216 prisoners per 100,000 non-Aboriginal population. and. According to statistics, nearly half of the youth incarcerated in Canada are Aboriginals. It is very clear that Canada's so-called status as champion of human rights is one that is very hypocritical and one that really only serves to follow the foreign policy of the country and specifically Canada's junior position within the global imperialist order. Based on the results of a 2012 report, the Aboriginals in all age groups had higher rates of daily smoking than did their non-Aboriginal counterparts. And that may explain the higher rate of cancer and other smoking-related diseases. <laughs>